We're back at Investor Channel's headquarters in San Diego, California. I'm your host, Daniel Wong. On today's program, we have the founder and managing partner of Wavemaker VC, David Seymour, on the program with us today. David, thanks so much for taking the time with us. Thank you, Daniel. Great to be here. So, David, you have been involved in the cryptocurrency markets for quite a long time. We're going to go into what Wavemaker Genesis is and what Wavemaker VC is. But first, give us a little bit of background on yourself and, and how you got into this business. Uh, sure. So, you know, started in VC back in 95. So a long time ago in the first bubble, um, you know, had a great run. Uh, about 2012, a bunch of my kind of pretty close friends badgered me into buying some Bitcoin, which I eventually did and then eventually sold. Uh, you know, I thought I was a genius selling at $100 a coin, you know, 9x in like three months. And um, and obviously I ended up buying more eventually. But <laughs> uh, so everyone regrets when they sell Bitcoin the first time. Um, so, yeah, we've been very active in the space for the last year, doing a lot of speaking and a lot of investments, hold about 30 different, uh, I guess, combination of equity and tokens across the sector. And, you know, been very bullish for a long time. So, well, David, you've obviously been right on the money there, of course, and you've, you do a lot of speaking engagements. You just got back from Asia. And, and as I mentioned, you've been in these uh, these markets for quite some time. You've done some extensive research. So tell us about what Wavemaker VC is first, and then we'll dive into Wavemaker Genesis. Sure. So Wavemaker VC is an early stage venture fund. Uh, we've raised five vehicles so far. We're dual headquartered between LA and Singapore. Uh, so have a pretty large team based out of Southeast Asia, about 11 people in, out, out there. Uh, just raised a new sixty-six million dollar fund in Singapore, uh, and a lot of big investors, that, you know, big kind of big name uh, LPs there, um, and f focus very heavily on the early stage, so pre-seed, seed, seed uh, high velocity model, make about fifty new investments a year out of our venture funds globally, uh, about two hundred and fifty investments to date. So. Well, then also now, so you've been obviously, we talked about all the research into cryptocurrencies. What's Wavemaker Genesis? What are you doing with that one? Because that's very exciting. You just announced this. Sure, yes. Yeah. So we're launching a new fund called Wavemaker Genesis, which will be, and it's a hedge fund vehicle, but with a venture style. So focusing on very early stage crypto investments. So the equivalent in the crypto world of kind of pre seed and seed. Uh, so, you know, usually if, if they are planning an ICO, companies that are, you know, four to six months from the ICO actually launching, um, you know, we, we established a pretty interesting track record around that type of investing so far. We're early in a lot of big companies now that are, you know, unicorns like EOS and Vitomic and a bunch of others. Um, so, so yeah, so it'd be a new style of fund, you know, trying to be something a little different than what we see in the crypto hedge fund space, which is tons of kind of long haul mutual fund models. So we've seen this big rise in the cryptocurrency markets. Obviously, they're they're going nuts, and um, you know, pretty much no one has probably lost any money at these points. And now, all the institutional money is coming in. We just had the futures announced uh, not too long ago here. So, where do you see these cryptocurrency markets going, and why have you decided this is such an important uh, place to get involved at this particular t time? Yeah, I mean, we're we're VCs at our core, and the crypto space is a VC space, and it's and it looks more and more like that every day. Um, when, when all the new ICOs, or a lot of the new ICOs you see coming out are taking on kind of the typical aspects of early stage venture. So founder vesting, milestone um, you know, based on for releases of funds, uh, lockup periods, all those kind of things. So, you know, so the model isn't really different. There's a lot of rumors that, you know, ICOs are going to kill VC and, you know, I think they'll make it, they'll make it, they're making a huge impact on the space, but they're not close to killing anything. Um, why we're, you know, why we've stayed bullish in the space and, and kind of where we see it going, you know, you know, obviously there's been a lot of crashes in the crypto space so far. I'm sure we're going to see more. There's a lot of regulatory problems. There's a lot of things in crypto that don't work. And there's, you know, incredibly high valuations as of today, um, especially on the utility token side. You know, a tiny fraction of them actually have any utility, so they're they're basically trading at you know effectively an infinite revenue multiple. Um, but we, you know, long term, we think we're super bullish on this space. I don't know how crypto doesn't go to multi-trillion dollar sector, um, and we're pretty far from that now, even with the recent run up. So David said it. He does see some sort of a correction. I think coming. I mean, how big of a correction are we talking here? We've seen seventy percent pullbacks here and there. What are we talking? Maybe just talk Bitcoin for us. Yeah, I, I, I think we'll see at least one more 70% pullback. Now, market timing is really, really hard, and, and we don't try to do that very often. 
Um, I do advise people that are bullish to, you know, keep crypto as a pretty small portion of your portfolio today. <laughs> you know, it is by far the most volatile, highest risk sector in all of tech, which is saying something. Um, so I, I don't know when it'll come. I mean, I think, you know, Bitcoin 16,000 or whatever we're at today is, you know, seeing a phenomenal run up. You know, there just there seems to be only more fuel coming into it. You know, all the public markets. There's, you know, alone in the hedge fund world, there's 200 hedge funds on deck, which are going to, you know, average size is probably 40, 50 million. That's another, you know, a couple billion dollars coming into the sector, and, and liquidity is very poor. You know, you can't buy a few million, few billion dollars of Bitcoin today without moving the price measurably. Um, so, so I, I, in the near term, we're pretty bullish. It's going to keep going up. Um, and obviously no one ever sees a crash until it happens <laughs> or that magnitude of crash. So, you know, I, I don't know what'll be the trigger that'll do it. It'll probably be the U.S. government uh, doing something around Bitcoin or making, you know, declaring Bitcoin itself is not a, you know, viable for transactions or, or something. Um, you know, there's a lot of things coming. There's a lot of central bankers in the world that have really great jobs and make a lot of money and have a lot of influence. And as they start to realize what a crypto world looks like, their their role is pretty much zero in that kind of world. So there, there's going to be something that's going to happen at government levels around the world to, to slow this. That's a great point you think you make there. Now, we also would like to ask, what makes a, a good cryptocurrency coin? What are the aspects of it? Because we talk about you know maybe trying to decide which one's stronger than the next. You know Maybe it's a little more st you know stable here, investing here long term versus the other coin. Talk a little bit to us about that. Sure. I mean, there's there's two use cases of crypto, and this is a massive oversimplification, but I think it's it's kind of important. And, you know, there's currency coins like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, Monero, uh, which you know their their function is to act as currency. They're meant to be a measure, a unit of a payment. You know, then there's the utility tokens, you know, Ethereum and, and everything else. You know, the protocols and the DApps, um, and they're meant to be decentralized software. So if you using that kind of somewhat arbitrary um, delineation between the two, you know, on, on the currency side, what seems to be driving the smaller ones outside of Bitcoin is anonymity. Um, so the, you know, Z coin is probably the most advanced of them with their zero, uh, zero coin protocol, which is a very advanced kind of mixing algorithm that hides transactions and keeps them perfectly anonymous, you know, and Dash and Monero are kind of the same thing or, you know, similar models of that maybe less advanced. Um, but those are basically, you know, kind of the drug dealer coins. They're, they're people that they're for coins for people that are very, very focused on anonymity and not having their transactions traced. Um, and then switching that, you go to the utility tokens. You know, Ethereum is, you know, interesting. It's fairly old technology now. It basically only is used for, you know, exchanges with ICOs. <laughs> you know, outside of CryptoKitties, I'm not sure they actually discovered a great use case today. Uh, and those, and in that sector, there's some coins I really like. My my biggest personal holding is EOS, uh, which is a designed to be an Ethereum competitor, launching in like seven months, uh, from, uh, launching the software in seven months. So we got a long way to go. Um, but there's, you know, the utility side of things has a lot of challenges. The low transaction volume is probably the biggest, but there's a lot of other challenges around just basic functionality. Like very few things actually work in the utility side. So I think the I was gonna, my, most of my early bets are around the currency side. Those actually do everything they're supposed to do today. They just work. They're, 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 you know, they're equivalent of a dollar. And the utility tokens, nothing much is going to work for several years. Uh, so when you see some of these coins with multi-billion dollar valuations and a product launch in you know 18 months, that seems a little odd. I, I think these are great points you make. David, I think we're right about out of time for today, but we'd like to thank the managing partner and founder of Wavemaker VC and Wavemaker Genesis for coming on the show. David, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Daniel. Take care. Hey, David's done all the research. He's been doing this for a very long time. For people out there who are interested, go to wavemaker.vc, download the research deck, find out more information, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll catch you next time. Stay tuned for the next interviews here on InvestorTownHall.com. 